I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Gary Savage, President and CEO of SmartMoneyTrackerPremium.com. Welcome back to the show, Gary. Thanks for having me again, Jim. Copper showing unusual strength at a time most people would expect it to go down yet it's still hanging in around 215 the big news i guess is that china is getting back into building more residential real estate it appears to be the driver is that sustainable well um you know it's been my opinion that the world economy is going to uh, improve going forward um you know, there, there are lots and lots of people that keep calling for a crash. Of course, they've been doing that for the last seven years. Um, that's not my opinion. I, I think it looks to me like the NASDAQ is going to break out of this 15-year range. It's been in here pretty soon, and I think we've got uh, at least another four or five years before the the market tops and, and we get, you know, the next bear market anyway. So uh, this rally has been led by the uh, economically sensitive semi stock so I don't see anything not to like about it. So if the economy is going to improve, then I would expect the commodities to, you know, at least trend generally higher. Now with oil, of course, that's been a hard read over the summer, hasn't it? That one has been a tough one. That, that's baffled me. I was, a, uh, you know, coming out of that low in February, it, it did what I expected it to do. We, we had a nice push up to to fifty dollars, and then we. We had a, a correction, which is not unusual, but I was expecting a, a little bit more strength. I, I wanted to see oil get back above uh, that recent high at 51 and, and make it at least to 60, but it kind of petered out at about 49, and, and now we seem to be churning in a range between 50 and, and 40, and uh, hard to trade that one. It, and nothing follows through on it. Uh, there's no sustainable trends. It's hard to pick the bottoms of the uh, corrections. So um, I'm kind of s- steering away from that at the moment um, until it gets out of this range that it's in. Well, I'm sure there's pressure from banks for some of the smaller oil companies to pay up as well. Yeah, um, the rally out of the beginning of the year, um, I think, probably stopped most of the bankruptcies, and, and they were starting to go parabolic in the energy sector. So, you know, I think we've probably cleaned out most of the weak players. And as long as we stay in this range between 40 and 50, I don't know that we're going to, you know, you know, a whole lot more bankruptcies, but, um, you know, we're definitely not going to have any big earnings increases in this range. Uh, the, the energy sector needs the oil to get back above $50. Venezuela is pleading with other producers to cut back by 10%. Otherwise, they say there's no way to get out of these oil doldrums. Will anyone go along with their plea? Well, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you whether or not they will or not. It, it never made sense to me why Saudi Arabia would dump so much oil on the on the world and start this in the first place. You've got a, a finite resource that's eventually going to run out. Why in the world do you want to sell it for less than you have to? That never made any sense to me. Why do you think the Saudis thought they could kill U.S. shale oil? Yeah, that, that seemed kind of a, a stupid strategy. Uh, you know, as soon as price goes back up, you know they're just going to come back online. So it just seems like they just uh, shot themselves in the foot for a while. And I remember two years ago when the price of oil started to drop, the Saudis said it didn't matter to them. They could still make money at $7 a barrel. That didn't turn out to be the case. No, they've uh, they really put a dent in their uh, in their savings, so to speak. So uh, they, I think they need the, the price to go back up too. It would, I think, it would do everybody good if they would, uh, you know, everybody would agree to uh, cut back just a little bit and uh, 
and take the uh, take some of the supply offline, and then if the economy does uh, start to to grow again, like I think is probably going to happen, then that uh, that should uh, equalize uh, price a little bit, uh, and hopefully put it maybe above fifty to somewhere between fifty and seventy dollars. I think be a sustainable price. Well, gasoline prices still haven't come down like they're supposed to in September when driving season ends. Uh, yeah, I heard there were some shortages, uh, I believe, uh, down in the south. So uh, apparently there's some bottlenecks in the refineries. Well, good news for them, I guess. They can boost prices. And I also hear uh, a major refinery is going to go down for $130 million worth of uh, maintenance back east. And uh, even if that's on the east coast, that affects prices right across North America, doesn't it? Correct. And this is usually the time where they... Um, you know, do the maintenance on the refineries, so uh, this is not unexpected. Maybe a, a milder than expected September also help people stay in their cars. Mm-hmm, possibly. What do you feel is going to be the breakout point in either, you know, the oil markets, energy markets, or the equity markets? Well, I think the equity markets are on the verge of, at least the NASDAQ anyway, is on the verge of breaking out, um, of that 15-year range it's been in, and and that's a that's a big long consolidation period. And generally speaking, the the bigger the consolidation, the bigger the the move. Once it you get a break out of that, we witnessed something similar in gold uh, back in uh, 2000. What was it 2008 to 2010? I believe it was. Uh, gold hit that top at uh, a little over a thousand dollars, and we had the uh, collapse into the um, uh, recession, and it went up and it tagged that $1,000 level about two or three more times, and then when it finally broke out, we, we had a monster run from uh, from 1000 up to 1900 So that was about a year and a half consolidation, and it, it uh, generated an almost 100% run over the next couple of years or year and a half. Uh, compare that to a 15-year trading range that the NASDAQ's been in, and I think this could go um, much, much further than most people can even imagine right now, and especially with most analysts still trying to call for a market crash. Why would the NASDAQ be so much stronger than the Dow and the S&P, and could it actually sustain its own growth if they were going down at the same time? Well, I think um, the energy sector is, is dragging a little bit on the S&P. You don't really have that in the NASDAQ. But um, every... Um, period of growth is almost always led by tech because there's there's usually a, uh, a new industry or a, or a paradigm shift uh, that's taking place and it almost always occurs in the tech sector. So uh, as an example, uh, it, as we came out of uh, World War II, we had two new industries. We had the electronics and the plastics and uh, that was kind of the new tech at the time. That led uh, that, that growth phase from from like 45 to I think we topped out in about 66, and we had that bear market for uh, about 18 years, and then we got the next new industry, which of course was the, the personal computer and the internet, and that drove the next leg of the uh, uh, you know of the of the market uh, to the top in in 2000, and then we we had another nine year bear market, and I think. This phase of the bull market is going to be driven by uh, the biotech sector, which has been uh, acting pretty good uh, the last couple of days. We've got a little little breakout occurring um, uh, in the XBI uh, index. Um, so I, I think over the next, uh, there's a, I think that's where the, the big world-changing discoveries are going to be made, as in the biotech industry. And uh, you know, we've been talking together for almost a year now, and, and I i maintained all along that I, I like biotech, and I think that's uh, biotech is going to be the uh, internet of the, uh, of the from now until you know probably like twenty thirty uh, for the, for this bull market anyway. It's going to be the driver of this bull market. Is medical marijuana part of that? No, not really. Uh, I what I'm looking for in biotech is is not you know legalization of recreational drugs. I'm looking for something that can um, not so much uh, treat uh, 
um, like to say the diseases of old age, arthritis, you know, heart disease, you know, just general aging, loss of productive capacity as we get older. But I'm looking for um, cures, so to speak. So uh, I'm just going to make up an example here. Let, let's say, you know, most people as they get older, they get arthritis, especially in the knees. It becomes difficult for people to walk and, you know, they can't run anymore. So let's say, oh, four or five years from now, the, the technology improves to the point where if somebody has an arthritic knee, they go into the uh, the Apple store, so to speak, uh, of biotech, and you get a, a shot of stem cells and nano robots, and it goes in there and it just rebuilds your knee, and you walk out a day later with a 20-year-old knee. And so you're not treating uh, an arthritic knee, you're not replacing it with a prosthetic, you're just curing it. And if we can get to that stage, then I think you eliminate our debt problem because most of our debt is is because of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and that is simply because as people get older, we get to a point where we, we cannot uh, work anymore and we cannot um, you know, support ourselves. So we need uh, many people need to rely on the government to uh, to fund their retirements, and so we built up this massive debt. Um, that we just can't pay, but if we can get rid of those or cure those diseases of old age to where somebody in their 80s feels the same as they did in their 20s, then uh, I think you cure our debt problem. Well, one of the new high-tech things I just did see was uh, they call it the teardrop. They It's a little uh, a pellet of basically water that they put on top of your eye and it cures the farsightedness you get when you get old and you need reading glasses. And there's billions of people who need reading glasses. Wow, that, no, that's amazing. I hadn't heard of that. It's I brand new. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. How many reading glasses do you have scattered around the house? <laughs> <laughs> A few. We'll have more with Gary Savage right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange. Symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Gary Savage. Gary, we were talking about how high tech can help things, and you're saying biotech. Well, what about the robotic industry that's just going to boom like crazy, especially robot-driven cars? I think that probably would be another driver of this bull market is robotics. Um, I'm seeing more and more in the, in the stores, uh, um, most of them, especially Walmarts and and quite a few of the uh, grocery stores, you've got, you know, automatic uh, checkout. People can just go through the line and, and check their, their selves out. So you're, you're cutting down on, on payroll, which is, you know, of course, uh, you know, a lot of people would say that's a bad thing. But <clears throat> if it frees up labor f to do something else, you know, that's just the, the way of the world. It, we've always had uh, creative destruction. Uh, you know, when the automobile was invented, it, it destroyed the buggy. Uh, industry, um, and that's just the way of the world. But it, it always leads to something better in the end. And and I think robotics is uh, is going to be a, another driver of this bull market. Do you see almost a day where everybody has their own little personal robot? So even if your job is supposed to be stacking stuff, you supervise that robot as it does your job. Exactly, or the robot just does the job, and you're free to go do something else. Or uh, of course, in Europe, they're worried about the loss of jobs. They're even proposing a tax on every robot, calling it an electronic person. Yeah, I, I think it's. It, it always seems like it's a, a bad thing in the beginning. A new industry, you know, we get creative destruction and jobs are lost. But, but the, the world has to progress, and uh, so there's there's always pain at the at the start of a. Uh, uh, you know, the new shift in the in the world economy. But uh, in the end, it, it's always a good thing. Do we just have to become more creative with ourselves if a robot's going to take your job? Yeah, I think you have to learn to do other things. So maybe instead of 
uh, you know, wasting labor, um, checking people out at Walmart. You know, people get reeducated and they become, uh, you know, researchers in the biotech industry and they in, invent, uh, you know, new cures and uh, for diseases and, and things like we discussed earlier. So, uh, you know, it, instead of just wasting labor on meaningless jobs, it just gets put to better uses. What happens to those people who aren't smart enough to be nanotech researchers? Well, um, you know, there's there's always going to be that that problem, and uh, you know, if you if you try and fight it, then you just get a world that's stagnant and and nothing is ever accomplished. You know, you could have you could have tried to protect the uh, the buggy industry back in the turn of the century, and and uh, we would have those workers would have kept their jobs, but would we actually be better off by not having automobiles now? I don't think so. Well, uh, in the late 1800s, researchers in New York wondered what they were going to do because the city was growing by 100,000 people a year with all that horse dung that would be produced, a million pounds a day. They did mm-hmm. find a solution, and it was the automobile. Yeah, and I, and I think we're we're probably trending towards electric automobiles, so uh, we'll, we'll get rid of a lot of the uh, pollution eventually you know we're not there yet and it's going to take a while to build out the infrastructure but i think in in 10 or 20 years most automobiles will probably be electric and, and we'll get rid of most of that carbon monoxide emission and they won't be uh, driven by people correct yeah that's another interesting uh, uh, area of uh, study right now is the these driverless cars uh, i've watched a few youtube videos on that very interesting now they won't need to have parking garages near where you work because they'll just drop you off and go back home or, or go park somewhere where it's free. Mm-hmm. I'm getting ready to take a trip across the country here soon, and it would be wonderful if I could get a machine to drive my RV from here to Kentucky. Well, right. You could go and sleep in while you're headed off to the next campground. Exactly. Beautiful. Gary, thank you so much for chatting with us. You're welcome, Jim. My guest has been Gary Savage, President and CEO of SmartMoneyTrackerPremium.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our YouTube channel is TalkDigitalNetwork. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.